All right, sorry, I am back. Took me a little bit longer than I anticipated. Got some water and some tea. So we are nice and hydrated. How do I write butt spot so it can't, uh, butt spot is a bot. So butt spot is just like an auto reply thingy. But butt spot just auto replies to things. That's uh, that's just how it works. So if you if you don't want butt spot to, uh, to rewrite your messages with butts in the name, there's a command, I think it's exclamation bot, I think. Anyways, Dequaza on the left-hand side, and we've got Team Hopaka on the right. We're going to the Team of Spider Queen for map number one. We got some housekeeping to do before we get into this. And, uh, let's see. So, housekeeping. Uh, Meta Madness style of draft. Here's that I picked and played around available for future maps. Uh, there is a bounty system. We actually did see a bounty earlier. Uh, the bounties are as followed. Pick and play and win, of course, with Butcher, Chogald, and Nova, Asmodan, Gazlo, Murky, Probius Valera, Kale the Zod, you can only do one bounty uh, per team, so the team that just did the Gazlo and won with it, they can't do that again in the future. Convection, Kalethos, Hunt, Illidan, Nidus, Network, Zagara, Twin Blades, Varian, Monstrosity, Abathur, Longboat, Vikings, Stitches and Alex Draws with the level 1 Globe Talents, uh, Lili and Chen with the with no talents, just Lili and Chen, uh, Triple Healer Composition, No Healer Composition, Deuce Pirates. Those are bounties, so the way the bounty pool works is uh, there's a thousand dollars if four teams or if uh, four different teams complete one bounty each they get 25% So it's kind of like a share system. So obviously you can get more than that So if you complete two bounties, you're getting even more of that prize pool uh, If you're watching here on twitch be sure to follow the stream if you'd like to support the stream further It's always much appreciated if you're watching on YouTube be sure to like and subscribe so we can grow the YouTube page every little bit helps us over there and uh, We're in the group stage right now. So this is uh, round robin every team plays each other Dayquaza versus Hopaka map number one third best of three of the day Thank you everyone for hanging out. Hope you're having a wonderful Sunday, and I appreciate you uh, Hanging out with us Deathwing, what's up Kala? How you doing today, bud? Sometimes Buttspot hits with gold and sometimes it whiffs. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, there's we have a Discord channel of Best of Buttspot. And there are some good Best of Buttspots, but there's also some... There's some pretty big whiffs in there where it's like, dude, come on. Hogger, White Mane, Diablo for the side... And, and uh, Hanzo for the side of Team Dequaza. We're looking at a Team Hopaka with a Johanna Blaze Deckard. This is Team of the Spider Queen. Gonna need some sort of wave clear in the rotations. I love a Gul'dan for this map. It's one of my, this honestly is one of my favorite maps for Gul'dan. I feel like the Medivh is a steal here because I think they would have gone into a uh, hyper carry Hanzo with Madara playing Hanzo. So I think the Medivh is a bit of a steal. I love it. I actually love this Medivh pickup. The uh, Vala is really, really good. If I remember correctly, the Vala player was like uh, Mariel. I think is like an insanely good Vala player. So this is, I think this is already shaping up to an amazing map number one in our third best of three. Last pick on the left, Mage. There's the Gul'dan. That's that's that that's that silver game knowledge I have from that Reddit post. <laughs> Start prediction. Which team wins? Team of the Spider Queen. All right, five minute gamble. Get your predictions in. What's gonna happen here in map number one? Asmodan would have been a good pick. Yeah, I, 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 I feel like teams aren't leaning too much into the bounties. Like, the, the, the conversation, like if we're looking at like the Gul'dan here, like let's just say they were like instead of Gul'dan they pick Asmodan. Like just Gul'dan has such better has a such has such a better kit than than Asmodan. Like yeah the siege is good the wave clear is good for for Asmodan, but I mean you have Horrify on this map. Like Horrify is just humongous for Gul'dan. So uh, it's a pretty good map number one. We're loading on in. Be sure to get your predictions in if you'd like to. I'm going to the Botanical Garden for a walk, but I'll leave you up. Oh, thanks for the lurk. Forget what? I appreciate that greatly. Have an enjoyable time in the Botanical botanical Garden. This is a super duper hyper carry Vala. That is super duper hyper carry Vala, but we'll talk about that in a moment, because on the left-hand side, we've got Gamer Boy for the members of Dayquaza, Team Dayquaza, playing quite main. Madara on the Gul'dan. Elian will be your uh, uh, Diablo. Dayquaza playing the Hogger, and Dark to play that Hanzo. Ooh, we have Pursuit of Flame level 1. 
Right side of the map, our Medivh composition, Holpaka playing the Medivh, High Wraith will be your Blaze, Parnax is the Jahana, Mariel is Vala, and we've got a Hunter Orc, Deckard Kane. Auto attack, Vala, Portal Mastery, we got Adrenaline Stimpak, Zealous Glare, Sapphire, Hogger with the On the Prowl level 1, Soul Shield for Diablo. Simple Geometry Hanzo, we already mentioned the Pursuit of Flame for Gul'dan, and Pretty the Frail for our White Man. Oh, Asmodan for the other team? I mean, either way, like, I just, I just, I don't know. It'd be nice, but I feel like it would just, it just wouldn't get that much value. No, I could be wrong on that, but. They also might not have, like, an Asmodan player on their team. That's also a possibility. I wouldn't say he's like super niche or anything like that, but oh, the Jet Propulsion doesn't connect onto Dayquaza. Protection, Force of Will needed onto High Wraith, and is able to tap the well, and we'll be fine for the time being. The only thing that kills Diablo is Vala post 16. Well, that's not true. Diablo could run straight into tower shots and die to those. <laughs> Vaylog, thank you for the Prime Gaming for six months. I'll resend your alert when we get out of game. Thank you so much for the continued support of the channel. Diablo could just could just go to a camp and, and trigger it and then just stand there and die. Oh, Dark is low. Medivh gets the kill with the portal in. Hanzo, first blood in favor for the side of Team Hopaka. Nice scroll of ceiling onto Diablo here. He'll be slowed down as well. We've currently got Madara getting chunked a bit. Throws a fell flame back. Currently 12 stacks. 24 for the Vala as level 4 is going to be picked up here. And we'll have clear into mid lane. Uh, Death Dealer. You've got the Raven Familiar. Incinerator Gauntlets. Subdue for the Johanna. Potion of Shielding for the Deckard Kane. Medivh is going to... Jump through. Oh, wait. Opaka. 12 stacks. 12 stacks. <laughs> 12 stacks, and Medivh does go down. Or to be, well, I guess 12 stacks will be lost. Uh, all right. One to one in kills. Madara with 13 gems to be turned in. Still a little bit to go for both sides to get the Webweaver summoned, but just depositing that good chunk is a nice little reprieve for the for the Ghoul Dan. Doesn't need to worry about getting picked off and dropping those. Alright, they'll drain a bit of HP. Vala picks up a few potions on the way back. Mediv, seven, nine stacks already. Vala vaulting in, gets the force of will from Mediv. So, Hopaka working their way back up. Diablo Shadow charges in. Arnax with a 27 turn in here. That's a good chunk of gems in the bank for Team Hopaka. Modder is still working on that level one. Not many stacks left to go. It's only 30 necessary, but wants to focus on just clearing out the way first. Anzo trying to poke in here. Medivh picking up a stack or two. Vala picking up her 51st or 50th stack. So should have that 1% on the bonus damage. Yeah, bonus damage. Sorry, I was I was mix up the attack speed and bonus damage. Jet propulsion onto Diablo. Madara getting a little bit low. Shadow charge in from Diablo. A lot of damage onto Vala. She does go down. That's one stack of her gambit to be lost. Down to 20% attack speed. High Wraith answers with the jet propulsion. But it seems like the priority is going to be for a turn in right now. I think. Diablo's delayed out from the scroll of ceiling. Haradra cube. 14 stacks for Armadiv currently. <clears throat> Gul'dan's done with his level 1. Johanna steps in with a, con a condemn and punish as well. Does have that subdue level, level 4. And also, shared punishment. Or the sins exposed. Sorry. For the healing reduction. Blaze is the one to go down in all of this. Vala gonna try and put some pressure on the Madara who just continues to drain that HP. 
Diablo initiating once again on Tavala. She'll back away and tap a potion on the lane. Portal set up. They want to focus on to Diablo here. He overpowers one. Hungering Arrow chunks into his health pool, but that's as much as it does as Double Soak continues between top and mid. Blaze working his way down to bottom to pick up that experience. Diablo with the turn in. Lands the Shadow Charge. 24 stacks from Adiv. He's got a portal, and he's able to get out of there alive. Meanwhile, Gamer Boy gets chunked by the Vala. Is there a vault to take him down? There's a vault to get away right now. Vala very, very low. Gets the Force of Will just in case. Ghoul Dan was able to hit with that Fell Flame. Seemed a little sketchy, but denied for the time being. Diablo now trying to back away. He's being slowed quite a bit, but he will not fall. Vala focusing on to Madara here. Hey, Dan, thanks for hanging out with us, bud. Enjoy the food, and uh, we'll see you next time, if not later. Red Web Weavers will descend for the side of Team Hopaka. Johanna will hearth out completely. Medivh, 32 stacks currently. Madara poking out a little bit. Diablo has level 10. He's got that full soul stone. Or, excuse me. Uh, well, he's, he's full on soul stone, but he also has the reduced consumption as well post level 10. Uh, Horrify, Scarlet Aegis, Shockwave, Dragon's Arrow, Apocalypse. There's the Dragon's Arrow onto Vala. Horrify from Gul'dan is activated as well. Vala will not be picked off. On the opposing side, level 10 almost here. Mid Webweaver gets little to no value. Top lane Webweaver getting some. Polybomb, Medivh! Stay well and listen, Polybomb, Bless Shield, Reign of Vengeance, and Bunker for the Blaze. That is... a misclick? Shadow Charge onto Hunter Orc here. Medivh still working on his stackage, trying to pick up the last few Arcane Rift stacks. Big Condemn from the Jahana. Vala finds the kill onto Ghoul Dan. Polybomb onto White Mane. As Vala gets her 100th stack right there, seven minutes in. Scroll is sealing Sapphire, slowing the enemy quite a bit, but the siege and, and the siege and top lane continues. Augur looking to get okay. Stay well and listen from the Deckard Kane. Apocalypse from Diablo. Deckard's the one to go down. And now Team Dequaza. Dragon's arrow into three members. There's enough space created by High Wraith as Vol is able to vault away. Jet Propulsion into the enemy team's face, but yeah, this is... Ooh, actually, High Wraith gets chunked a bit there, but does not go down. Will Dan Horrify is off a cooldown, and here comes Diablo once again. Portal set up by Medivh. He's done with his stackage, and he does go down to Hanzo, but he's not going to lose those stacks. As I mentioned, he's already completed on that one. Blue Web Weavers will descend. Ghoul Dan working on this camp over here. Should be able to finish this out all in his own... Actually, he's going to get a little bit of help from White Mane as he's getting a little low here, but he's going to be able to drain some of that health and heal up just fine. Hogger gets some soak in the bottom lane. Nice staggering blow into Blaze Jet Propulsion attempt right there. Hogger spins through the wave really quickly, gets the clear on the minions and also the gems. Mid lane is pretty beefy with that camp that Madara grabbed. 13 talent here advantage as well for Team Dequaza. Portal set up by Medivh. There's a scroll of ceiling connecting onto our Diablo, but he's fine to back away. Starts the initiates once again. Horrify from Gul'dan. The arrow from top lane doesn't connect onto anyone. Shockwave from the Hogger to the back line. A very low follow with 155 HP is able to back away. Bottom fort does go down during all of this. Top lane fort, I think, should be the next target. Okay, so top lane fort is... Oh, wait, hold on, Diablo, Shadow Charge. Uh, I was just creating some room so they could take down the rest of this fort HP. And all three forts have gone down in favor of Team Dayquaza. And here's the thing to note, too. Back-to-back -back turn availability. Medivh will scout this out. 33 on the Diablo. That's the big one to turn in. Medivh is caught out here. Hopaka is finished out on, on his stack, so it's not that big of a deal. But it's going to be a big deal if you lose this many people. This could be boss plus Webweaver. I actually would not mind that call whatsoever. 
Top lane keep front gate is still fairly healthy, but yeah, there's boss plus web weaver call. Alright, will Diablo delay out? No. Okay, he's just gonna go for the entire turn in. They know that the enemy is on this boss because it's still showing on minimap and quite or well the same thing can be said about this uh, bruiser camp over here. Alright, web weavers will descend. Boss is timed out pretty good with this, honestly. Spins through, gets some easy clear through mid. A uh, top lane is massive. Top lane is massive. A couple kills here, and this could be game number one. Uh, Classy, thank you for the raid. I appreciate that greatly. Welcome in, raiders. We're doing some some hots casting. Hope you're all doing well today. Thanks for uh, thinking of our wonderful channel. Much appreciated. Hope your uh, games were really good, bud. Bala with 150 stacks has only died one time so far. Boss and Webweaver in this top lane are going to confirm the keep, but it does not look like there's any extra kills to be had. Diablo goes in with the Shadow Charge, focusing onto the Vala. Portal set up by Medivh. Dragon's Arrow coming in from Hanzo as well. Diablo going to activate the Apocalypse. There's going to be a Scarlet Aegis from White Mane. Johanna so low. Blaze comes out of the bunker with a Jet Propulsion, but Johanna, Blaze do go down. This is looking like an absolute massacre. Vala, the lone defender, doesn't have level 13. This is looking like it's going to be Vala falling as well. Picked up by the side of Team Dequaza, and I said that there was a... Okay, this is now the fastest map in Banshee Cup Season 2. This is the fastest map by roughly 26 seconds. Have a good stream. You're off to bed. Hey, thanks for thinking of us, bud. I will follow you to the end of the world. Subscribed. Welcome. Thank you, Veloc, for the prime for six months. Thank you, Plasty, for the uh, raid. I appreciate all that greatly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hope you all stick around. We got some great games for all of you. <laughs> Somebody, please get this man What's up? Welcome back into the Banshee Cup. My mouse completely disconnected from everything, so that's always cool. I went to plug it into charge, and it decided to not be a mouse anymore. Let's go ahead and figure out why that is. I'm willing to bet there's some... There's 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 been an issue with, with this mouse. It's the only issue I've ever had with a Corsair mouse, but, um... Well... I don't really need it for the draft, so we'll just go ahead and enjoy the draft, and I'll unplug it when I need to unplug it. So, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, into the Banshee Cup uh, third best three of the day. Sorry, we're going to Battlefield of Eternity. Team Dequaza are in the lead in this best of three. <clears throat> it is the Meta Madness style of draft, so heroes that are picked and played are unavailable for future maps in this best of three. There's some bounties as well. We already saw one bounty being picked up earlier today, so that was kind of cool to see. And we'll see if there's going to be another, uh, if there'll be another one here for Battlefield of Eternity, but right now... <laughs> Did it become a rat instead? My mouse? No, no. There's, uh, there's, there's, there's a, there's a, there's, a, there's an IQ issue. That's it. It's actually, there's no issue with the mouse. It's just IQ being a butthole. So I gotta, I gotta mess around with IQ, but I just, I haven't had time or any sort of energy or motivation to sit at the computer and mess with stuff. I literally have two brand, I have two new cameras. I have two new face cams and I, I have, I have took, I took one out of the box and that's as much as I've done with it. I still need to install those. I'm going to swap out my main camera and bandits camera with the Mark II cameras because those are supposed to be better, but we'll see. Sometimes, sometimes Elgato overthinks things. I will be honest. Their, their face cam pro 
massively overthought. Massively overthought. They they really they really outdid themselves in overcomplicating things. Well, it's facecam pro. It's supposed to be, you know, pro. There's some, I've had some conversations with some Elgato people over these things, and I'm just like, you guys, you're, you're over, you're you're o you're being engineers. You're not thinking about it from the user standpoint, and that's 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 a small issue that that Elgato has. They don't think about, they just look at it from the engineering. This is how it should be done, rather than the actual how the uh, consumer will actually use and view their products. But whatever, I don't work for them. I've already given that feedback, and they don't care. Murden will be your first pick for the side of Team Hopaka. All right. Murden, fantastic for a map like this. We're gonna see a Li Ming, a new Barak, okay. Uh, the reason I like Murden here, you have the Sledgehammer level four, can be a huge, huge uh, value for, for your team. Co extra cooldown reduction, extra damage into the Immortal and Siege, basically anything that isn't a boss or anything that isn't a hero. Whoever thinks things Corsair with their IQ. Hey, Corsair's my sponsor, but IQ can sometimes be a butt, all right? IQ can be sometimes a butt. And that's, but that's not Corsair's fault. It kinda is. It kinda is, but it's, I, I blame, I blame IQ. I think IQ's kind of its own entity. You know how like in the Cthulhu mythos, there's like all the different, there's all the different Cthulian type monsters. It's like that. IQ is just a Cthulian type monster. Great main to be banned away here. From the side of Team Dayquaza, Team Hopaka, they could focus on a healer ban. Murd and Brightwing Chromie. Uh, if Anduin wasn't played yet, right? So Anduin is not a bad ban right here. Light bomb on a new Barak. Yeah, I, I honestly, if 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 it unless I'm misremembering, but I think Anduin is a huge, huge target. Okay, so the Haka is going to be the one to be banned out. Chen and Lili, are they going to do it? <clears throat> are they going to do the Chen Lili, or is this just going to be a standard healer? I, what, what was that first heal? What was the healer in that? Oh, I can't check because my mouse is currently being a butt. Cat's making mice doom, yes. All right, there, the, there is the Anduin. With my with my with my silver game knowledge, I can't believe I pick I pieced that one together, chat. Wow. As I said, there was a Reddit post that was looking for like more YouTube streamers, and of course the, all the responses were to Twitch streamers. And I found the one person that mentioned my name all the way at the bottom, and the first response was, Yeah, but his his game knowledge is silver. It's like, okay, dude. You've literally never watched me cast then. You've just, you've, you came to one stream and you saw that I was in silver rank and you based your entire opinion of me off of that. Reddit. Uh, I think Crush is currently playing billiards, but the people got Artanis. The people have Artanis right now. It is going to be a hyper carry Chromie on the side of Team Hopaka. Uh, ETC. This is an interesting draft for the side of Team Hopaka. Last pick on the left. What are we going to do? Not browsing Reddit will make your life much happier. Well, here's the thing, Anton White. I spent uh, half of Friday laying in bed and most of yesterday laying in bed. So you kind of get bored. You kind of get bored of watching TV and stuff. So you start scrolling aimlessly on things. I don't take it personally. I just find it really funny. I don't take it personally. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is the way that I view it. I'm the one out there making content, doing all of this, and they're not. They're sitting there living a sad life, commenting on Reddit. It's also just conversation pieces for the stream. It's always funny to look at these things. To me, it's always funny just because like, People will form an opinion without actually having any sort of like factual backing to it outside of one thing they saw. Or they're just uh, parroting what they heard someone else say on the internet. Because once again, Reddit is an echo chamber. Literally there are the, like, if I scroll through the heroes Reddit, there are like the same few posts. 
Am I too late to get into Heroes of the Storm? X Hero is OP. Who should I watch on Twitch? Uh, when will Microsoft save HOTS? And uh, there's usually some other thing in there. There's usually something like, I don't get this mechanic. Why is everyone so obsessed with camps? Left side of the map, Team Dayquaza looking for a 2-0 here in our third best of three of the day. We've got Elian playing your Anubrak Dark on the Li Ming. We've got a Madara Deathwing. Gamer Boy will be your Anduin. And last but not least, we've got a Dayquaza Chen. Right side of the map, it's going to be Team Hopaka looking to take us to a map number three, potentially, with High Wraith on the ETC. Chromity played by Muriel. Hunter Orc will be your Brightwing. Hopaka on the Artanis. And Parnex is the Muradin. Guitar Hero ETC makes sense. Parroting opinions are the best kind of opinions. Yes, because the internet told me to be upset about something, so I've decided that I'll just be upset because the internet said so. Artanis is going dings. Why? Why? All these... Oh, yeah, you forgot all these same hero ARAMs are dumb. Yeah, that post, too. That's... Because, because one person posted about the hour and a half Probius map, and now everyone's like, oh, anytime we get all matching heroes, it's an hour and a half. I've had three all Probius matches, and I'll tell you what, they have not gone more than 20 minutes. Hey, Ben, what's up, bud? But Muhammad, I can't think for myself. I need someone to tell me what to think. I once heard that Hots has been dead ever since Bandit stopped being padded and, and told he was a beautiful boy. Thoughts? Any thoughts on the state of the game, streamer? Uh, Baurek, thank you for the follow. Glad you're enjoying our random spiels and such. Uh, there is a gamble going on right now. Still got another minute or so from when you hear me talk about this. To get your predictions in, as we do have two to two in our... Actually, level, uh, level threes are here on both sides. Uh Okay, sometimes you shouldn't swap in front of the fort front gate. And I think Hopaka just learned that very quickly. Internet loves when people are upset. That is true. That is very true. So I should be more upset more often, chat, right? I should have like these 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 splitting opinions. I should have these, these, um, chat splitting opinions. There you go. That's the right phrasing for it. ETC with the crowd surfer. We've got Cyanix energy for our, uh, our Tannis, who's back down in bottom lane with six stacks currently. 11 on the Chromie for her once again the first time. Dayquaza really low in this channel. Able to use a flying kick to get out of this top lane situation as Modder is going to onslaught out. That little lunge right there. Got an invade on the camp over here on the bottom left of our screen. Uh, Chen's working his way down over here. ETC, oh wait, hold on, Chen Dayquaza does go down. It's one to one in kills. We do see Murden trading. Deathwing lands right on the point. No one gets the channel on this uh, camp because they want to chase in further onto Hopaka, who's looking a little low here. Gamer Boy throws out the chastise. It doesn't connect, but Anduin is the one to get the double kill. And it looks like High Wraith might be the target of another of a deletion here. Brightwing face shifts in, and she will be punished for High Wraith's sins. Rage gets click through. Echo pedal game. I think this is going to be Guitar Hero with the uh, hammer on. I think is the level seven. Typically, if you see Guitar Hero one with an off lane ETC like this, you often see the uh, guitar solo upgrade at 1 and 7 because they're synergistic. And I believe Echo Pedal is a level 7 talent, but either way, Dayquaza going to be jumping around here. Takes a Stormbolt to the back as Artanis gets a few Twin Blade stacks. Meanwhile, by the way, the Fallen Shaman in bottom lane is getting great value. I think it's going to get targeted by the tower, so that's unlucky, but still had great siege potential favoring the side of Team Dayquaza. Onslaught in. Mario on the right-hand side gets a time trap in time, and Modder is unable to get that kill into Chromie. Cataclysm into the team fight with a incinerate onslaught. Good body blocking onto Hunter Orc. That is going to be a fifth kill for the side of Team Dayquaza. And Team Opaka have just been 
melted in this map number two. Not sure what's happening, but it's seven to one in kills. And the first phase does go over to the side. Uh, what? Chen gets a kill. He sprays a little vampire teeth. Li Ming on this left-hand side. Dark working on the objective. Chen looking to maybe just go into top lane up against the ETC. All right, Gamer Boy, Andu, and Harthing out. Dark finishes out the objective. Eat, uh, Nubrak over here just chilling on the right side, just checking to see if the enemy's there. Just put a bit of pressure onto them. Deathwing and Fred. Oh, Deathwing and Dayquaza almost take down High Wraith in the top. But the hide is not cooked. No, uh, no tanned leather. Fight does break out as the Immortal goes into top lane. There's going to be Murd and Dwarf tossing into the back line, trying to focus on the Gamer Boy, that Anduin, who is going to be swapped by the Artanis. Big heals coming out as Dayquaza drinks up some brew. We've got Madara chasing down Muriel once again. That is a time trap and kind of same situation as last time. Time trap will be able to save Chromie, but ETC goes down to the Chen. Parnax on this Murd and tries to get out, but he's dead. But, oh, uh, six HP? I was like leaming. Oh my god, dear lord. Dark, you absolute monster. Damn, Madara, they have families, I know, right? Madara goes down into bottom lane. Anduin will fall, but the fort in bottom lane actually will not be taken down here. Looks like the fort in top goes down. Anduin is lost. Ten talent tier here faster for the side of Team Dayquaza as they're making a quick rotation onto High Wraith and bottom. And I don't think ETC realizes this. Okay, he's going to be able to power slide away, but I think he's still dead. Phase shift from Brightwing. Now Brightwing, is she going to be punished for trying to help out ETC? Doesn't look like it. Anduin has respawned. Cataclysm out from the Deathwing. A new Brack will go down. Dayquaza hit with a temporal loop, but he activates his Wandering Keg, and he's able to roll on out. <clears throat> okay, so a little bit of poke from Dark here. Stormbolt going out from Muradin. Chastise to connect onto one. So just a little bit of poke onto Gamer Boy as well over the wall. Poking in or peeking into top lane really quickly. A bit of back and forth between Dayquaz and High Wraith, but take a look into bottom right now. Nubrak burrows in. Polymorph by Brightwing. Deathwing drops down, focusing once again onto, onto the Chromie here. She's a little split. Throws down the time trap. Madara, aware of it this time. He's like, okay, I'm gonna walk around this. As Chen goes in for the flying kick, the face shift from Brightwing will come through. Bellowing Roar from Deathwing was utilized. Wandering Keg gets uh, not the split they're looking for. ETC hit with a Light Bomb. He's able to power slide away. Stage dives out of the engagement. No, he stage dives right into the engagement. He's going to get hit with a Cocoon from Anubarak. Parnax activates his Avatar. Big balls from Lee Ming get a reset. Anubarak is saved by a Leap of Faith from Anduin. Deathwing still putting pressure. ETC, he's going to go down, but so is Deathwing. I do believe, yes, Deathwing is going to the beach from Chromie. Li Ming is going to look for another reset. Swap from the Artanis. Dark is able to get a good heal from Anduin. Blinking in. Magic Missiles connecting into the butt of uh, this Chromie is now face shift from Brightwing. Not able to channel fast enough for the Artanis. And it's a one for two, I think, in this engagement. Nubrak's going to hearth out. Throws down the Impale. A couple hundred HP for him. Chastise from Anduin going out as well, and looks like this Anubrak really needs to full full reset. Right wing to reset. Chromie to do the same. Leaming in bottom clears out the camp and taps well. Looks like Muradin is going to be pressured by Dequaza a little bit. There's that Skullcracker level, level 7, so it's a bit of extra pressure onto the sustained target. I guess the sustained damage target. But it is still a level lead. A new Brat goes in with the burrow. Deathwing drops down from the sky. Self-cast life bomb from Anduin focusing onto Chromie. There is going to be a soothing miss from Brightwing as they're focusing onto Anduin right now. He is deleted. Cataclysm out from Deathwing. Brightwing is going to be cocooned currently. Li Meng. Force back over here. 
Looks like the 50% does go over to the side of Team Hilpaka, who are starting to rally here in map number two. DC split by the Wandering Keg. Doesn't seem like he's too concerned about that one. Two seconds on Anduin Death Timer. ATC power sliding is a staged IBTC, mind you. No camps pushing in. Only one fort's gone down. Bit of damage onto the bottom lane fort on the side of Team Hopaka as well. Li Ming looking for these combos and does find a decent arcane orb into the enemy. Right wing able to blink away over the wall and the immortal phase is still up and available. Only 25% left on the side of Team Dayquaza. 180 stacks for the Artanis. Five stacks for our Anduin and the Piercing Lights. It's 5% spell power. Chromie's done with it once again the first time. Okay, camp on the left will be grabbed, and uh, they're still they're fishing for 13, but of course, Opaka, Team Opaka don't want to allow that to happen, and Newbrack burrows short distance to deny the temporal loop. Madara trying to chase onto the enemy, Muradin over here looking to Stormbolt into Anduin, doesn't land it, Desperate Prayer, Artanis comes in with a swap, Chastise thrown out as well, Wandering Keg from Chen is mostly to zone back the enemies, but Dark is going to go down. On the right of our screen, as Muradin on the left will be traded. Line from the Artanis will be activated. Cataclysm from Deathwing. Not too sure about this. 43 seconds on a potential uh, uh, bellowing roar. And oh, Timo Paka coming out on top of this, this objective phasing. And they're fighting these later game kills, which is really helping out a ton. Deathwing on the right-hand side is trying to fight into the Chromie, but Dragon v. Dragon is not working out, and we see the pings. ETC gets the stage dive, and this Deathwing is dead. Okay, Dayquaza rotates down to bottom to grab the experience. 13 talents here, uh, here on both sides. 14 to 7 on our levels. Our next looking for a flank over here on the top of our screen. Does find that into Gamer Boy. The, the flank is in play. Li Ming, uh, wave of force, pushes back the enemy. But yeah, that was a beautiful flank rotation from, from our Muradin. And this will be top lane fort going down. What was looking like a dominant map number two for Team Dayquaz has just absolutely fallen apart here post level 10. ETC has the Encore. So he's got 5% off of his 75 second cooldown. ETC power sliding. They're looking for more pressure onto the enemy as the Immortals being managed by Li Ming. Big impale from a new brag. Deathwing coming in with some onslaught. And, uh, oh wait, good bellowing roar into the corner. There's so much damage onto Murden, but they can't find the kill into him. ETC hit with a cocoon, broken out immediately. As this is a dead Anubrak. I don't think he can burrow charge out of this one. He is temporal loot, but yeah, he's, he's dead right there. The... Li Ming finishes out the top lane clear and will rotate down to bottom, but as I said, this is all kind of falling apart for the side of Team Day Quaza, who are looking so good in the beginning of this map and also map number one. Stage dive from ETC, takes out a sidewall, so there's at least that value from it. Blade dash, face prism, Dark is able to hug the wall and avoid that. No sand blast into this Li Ming. As we continue to see pressure applied through bottom with a grab onto this camp. Nubrak respawning in one. Deathwing up in the sky currently getting full HP. Wandering Keg from Chen. He steals away the camp. Get out of town. Deathwing drops down from the sky. The camp is stolen away. Bellowing Roar just came off a cooldown as well. Lunge in. There's a Nubrak with a decent... Oh, wow. Oh, oh, ouch. Ooh, ouch. So much CC, so much lockdown. Nicely done as Brightwing blinks away as the Arcane Orb thought was about to hit. And now, Team Dayquaza hits 16 talent. They take down the bottom lane fort. A new Brack is going to be Temporal Loop, but it doesn't seem to matter to him. Deathwing's got to take flight once again. 13 seconds until he can do so. Well then. Madara will take that flight now, get full HP and uh, bars of shielding. You and all, your servants in hell will all right, so first half is quickly going over to the side of Team Dayquaz. At least it's expected to, but I'm seeing a rotation in. Deathwing is about to be able to land here in a second or two, if I'm not mistaken. And he can. He's got Bellowing Roar off a of cooldown. Artanis, by the way, 255 stacks. 
Chen. Chen starts out this camp on the left-hand side with Anduin assisting. Nubrak checking the bush really quickly. Immortals go to race potential sides. ETC in top lane does have stage dive available. 16 here for both. They actually go back to the camp and finish this out completely. Chromie poking onto the enemy as well. Nothing being worked on, on the right-hand side. Erden's got this this flank pos uh, position once again. Bit of pressure onto Dayquaza, but I don't think this this Chen is too concerned as Li Ming continues to throw combos over the wall. <clears throat> oh, I'm out of tea. Alright, Deathwing, I think is did he take flight? Yeah, I think he did. Oh, that's Murden I have selected. Doesn't matter. Leap of Faith saves the Chen. Here comes Deathwing with the drop from the sky. Avatar activated by the Murden as well. Cocoon onto him. Bellowing Roar. We have ETC split on the left-hand side as he did use that stage dive. And now they just want to take down the cow. Temporal loop onto Dark over here. Is there a Leap of Faith? There is going to be a Leap of Faith. And she's able to blink out as well. ETC is going to be taken down by Deathwing. Or at least they're going to attempt to do so. Onslaught. And Anubra can close the distance easily. Fallen Shaman in bottom lane will push on to the keep front gate. And now we're going to see a full race between both sides. But, I mean, there was already the lead for Team Dayquaza. A Larian to top lane because it is a more well-defended lane since the Fallen Shaman opened things up a little bit more in bottom. We've got Chen drinking up some brew. He'll clear out this minion wave. 17 to 9 in kills. And depending how things go here, this could be a game-winning push for the side of Team Dayquaza, looking for that 2-0 on Battlefield of Eternity. But let's see actually what takes place and what transpires in the next few moments. I want to look at stats as uh, there's no real new talent information, not for another level and a half or so. Nubrak chilling in the bush, making sure there's no flank from Muradin, who is setting up for another one over here. He will be scouted out. DC stage dives in. This is a little haphazard. Deathwing drops down from the sky. Nice swap onto the Anubrak, who's now trying to get away. Temporal loop onto him. Beautifully done, and Muradin's able to dwarf toss out. The Immortal is getting decent damage onto the keep, but the fight over here is still breaking out. I thought the phase prison connected right there. It did not. Timeout from Chromie will not be utilized. And the Immortal, as I mentioned, is going to get the keep in top lane. Nicely done. They lose their Anubrak from a haphazard sort of start. But they get the keep. The map is looking good for the side of Team Dayquaza. Wandering Keg for Chen is available if he's forced to use it here. Camp to grab just below. Cataclysm from Deathwing is available, but it looks like he is taking flight. Yeah. All right, so Deathwing takes flight. Full armor plating, all that good stuff. I think he was actually at full everything, but anyways... Two seconds to go on a new Brack. Dark takes a bit of piercing sand from Chromie, her level 20. Dayquaza jumps in. There's going to be no Wandering Keg activated. Deathwing drops down from the sky. Bellowing Roar is off a of cooldown. He won't utilize it. There it is. Currently, ETC on the left-hand side is so displaced, he does go down from a combo of Li Ming and friends, and that is a nice pick onto the cow. 20 talents here, almost here. Wave of Force for Li Ming to split the enemy team, but Dark needs to blink away. And now Hopaka trying to get out of here as well or work towards the allies. Chromie providing tons of really good artillery here. Anubrak may go down. Little Leap of Faith. is so very low. Can he drink through the pain? Able to fly and kick over to Parnex. This Murden who activates Avatar getting hit with the Impale. Li Ming blinking, but she's blinking right into a time trap, and I think she's dead. Nope, she gets another blink out. 20 is here. We've got the Taurash Elements, Purifying Brew, Arrival of God, or no, Destroyer's Rampage, excuse me. Censure Anduin and Rewind for our Anubarak. Uh, another objective phase is here. Catapults and such have arrived to core and top. If this objective is won by the side of Team Dayquaza, this goes into bottom lane. More magic missiles going in. <clears throat> A storm bolt on to Dayquaza as here comes Madara dropping down from the sky, lunging on to this Chromie once again. Stage dive from ETC trying to get to the back line. This is not, this is level 20 versus level 19 favoring Team Dayquaza as Madara is forced back to Chromie. 
She will tap well. There's a soothing mist activated by Brightwing. Dark trying to poke here and there. Big Bellowing Roar splits the Muradin. Avatar down for another three or four seconds. And Madara so very low, the Deathwing will fall. That's a good chunk of experience. Temporal loop onto somebody here. Li Ming will trade into Chromie. And the Purifying Brew denies Muradin the Stormbolt, but Gamer Boy throws down a Light Bomb trying to create some space. He's dead. Unless the Nubrax got some God Tier CC. There's a Leap. Oh my god, the Burrowin! As well as the Leap of Faith. They throw down the Impale. A Nubrax. Does he have Rewind to get out of here? Purifying Brew enough to share. No, Chen can't help out a Nubrax. And I mean, it's falling apart here. Crowd Pleaser ETC. Gamer Boy does go down. Nice Censure. Desperate Prayer dropped. Youch! This could be a game, I mean, Immortal goes to bottom lane. So there is that. Immortal will head to bottom. If one by the side, of, keep in mind, Team Opaka still have a ways to go through this Immortal. Catapults are at core. Brightwing's gonna manage this. The Catapults will get scratching on the shielding and that's about it. Oh, we still have halfway point too. That's pretty good for the side of Team Dayquaza. Parnex is gonna hearth out completely. Brew being drank by Chen. He's got Wandering Keg off a of cooldown if he wants to try and delay out this objective area. Chromie throwing in some sand. Li Ming with a combo thrown in as well. No, they go... Okay, they check the bush. They're going to go ahead and just grab this camp. They'll give the Immortal, and that'll go into bottom lane. Though, Muradin scouting out here does find the enemy working on this camp. Deathwing has respawned. He's up in the sky, I do believe. This is a little sketchy here. Not sure what they not sure if they really want to commit to this. Okay, wandering kick from Chen. He's able to get the camp. Li Ming is gonna go down. ETC with the crowd pleaser stage dive. That's huge for the side of Team Hopaka, who are also looking at a new brack. Does he get the rewind in time? He's actually able to get the leap of faith. Dequaza low on this Chen. Is there another leap of faith? Light bomb is humongous. But it's not that. Wait a second. Bellowing roar from Deathwing, maybe? The Immortal's working on the bottom lane for it, but Deathwing is lunging in. Parnox is so very low. Chen and Brightwing traded. Cataclysm avoided by Parnox here. Muradin should have died twice over, but he won't. And now Madara finds himself in a really awkward spot. He's like, I gotta get out of this. Throws down an Onslaught. Oof. Or an Incinerate, excuse me. All right, 20 some minutes in and this Immortals working its way through keep front gate, leaming up in 10 seconds. Is that enough? Stage dive from ETC as Nubrak reads the location. Two seconds on Li Ming. Artanis is gonna go down to Deathwing. Meanwhile, 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 just so you all know, but let's go back to the team fight in bottom lane. Immortals left to just work. Okay, they're just, they're going to, they wanna wipe out the enemy here. ETC shall go down as well. Uh, but this Immortal could end. Kata is going to be cleared out. Li Ming is chasing. Brightwing doesn't get the phase shift in time. Brightwing, the lone defender. Immortal almost takes down the core over here. Oh, oh, ah, ah, oh, ah, oh, 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 not like this. Brightwing! No, not like this! Alright, it's a not like this core. Not like this! Oh, no, 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 Brightwing, you can't. You can't, Brightwing. Good, I mean, it's a good attempt, but, uh, yeah. Alright, well, Brightwing, okay, alright, Team Day Quaza, they take it in 2-0. GG well played, a 4% core. Not like this.
Is G M F G an EU thing? Honestly, it's the first. Today's the first time I've ever seen it. Today is the first time I've ever seen it. I was I actually saw it twice, and I was like, I don't know what that stands for. Uh, Dayquaza did win that. Dayqua, they did win that. Five points. <laughs>